The scenario with SKU005 is an EOQ problem. How do you tell it's an EOQ problem? Primarily by noticing the particular set of information that it gives you. Let's take a look. The demand for a particular part called SKU005 is 15,000 units a year. It immediately reports capital D for annual demand. Okay, the cost of one SKU005 is $50. Oh, interesting. All right, well, you don't necessarily need that unit cost or purchase cost in the EOQ model, but I will note that it costs $60 to place an order for SKU005, a, a, a fixed cost associated with an order, that's capital S, and the user of SKU005 has a per unit inventory carrying cost of 25% of unit cost. Oh, I knew I knew there was a reason why we needed the unit cost. That's because H, the cost of holding one unit in inventory for one year, is 25% of the purchase cost. That's just what that said which means I can calculate that. That's what, $12.50? H is the cost of holding one unit in inventory for one year. Okay, um, oh, assume there's 250 working days in the year. Well, I'm sure we'll do something with that um, maybe a little bit later. Uh, what's the first question though? It says, what is the combined annual holding and ordering cost of an order, of an order size? of 200 units for SKU. This question is giving you an order size. I was saying EOQ, EOQ, you know, economic order quantity, calculating the order size. No, 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 at least not for this first question. It's, it's saying that somebody decided that they're going to be ordered 200 at a time. It's asking what the combined ordering and holding costs are. Ah, we need the total cost formula. So the total relevant cost in this case would be, what is that, D divided by Q, annual demand divided by the quantity, times S plus Q divided by 2 times H. Oh, we just need to fill in the formula. Okay, so in our case that would be 1500 divided by 200 because that's what they're asking about. Okay, this would get you the number of orders a year. Multiply that times the cost per order, so that's times 60. Plus over here, they're proposing Q equals 2. We divide that by 2 to get average inventory, is actually what we calculated here. And then say that multiplied by 12.5, because that's H, the cost of holding one unit in inventory for a year. I get like $450 in ordering costs and $1,250 in holding costs. Um, for a total bill annually, combined ordering holding costs of $1,700. Oh, and right away I know that this is not the most economic order quantity. How do I know that? Because the most economic order quantity will have a really interesting feature and that's when you do calculate its cost. These two costs tend to balance the ordering cost and the holding cost, and notice how they don't here. Okay, but nonetheless, that is the cost of ordering them 200 at a time. Now, what's the next question? How many SKU005 should be ordered to minimize the combined ordering and holding cost? There it is. That's the EOQ, the economic order quantity, which is the square root of 2 times D times S divided by H. To answer that question, what amount would actually minimize those costs, you fill in that formula. Okay, so I did that. And I get, okay, that's the square root of 2 times 1500, right? That's our D times 60, that's our S, divided by $12.50, because that's our H. And actually, for once, that comes out kind of nice and neat. I get 120. Ah, okay. so. If whoever manages this SKU005 wants to minimize ordering and holding costs over the course of a year, they should order these 120 at a time. Okay, well, any other questions on this? The vendor who sells SKU005 has just offered a 5% discount on orders of 500 or more. Now how many should be ordered? 
oh, that one question just took this from being a regular EOQ problem and changed it into a price break problem because that's what the 500 is. It's a price break. And now we need to decide again how much we should order in order to minimize all relevant costs. Now, technically, the first thing we need to do is to check if the EOQ associated with the discounted merchandise is valid, which is to say useful, which is to say we got to fill out the EOQ formula except with the discounted information. Oh, now you might be thinking, but how does the discount on the unit cost have anything to do with the square root of 2 times D times S divided by H? Uh, it does indirectly. Well, I shouldn't say indirectly, but kind of hidden. It's in H because where did H come from? It was $12.50 last time because it was the original $50 times 25%. You know, the first thing we need to do, it's actually pretty simple. Let's just figure out what the unit cost is if we got the discount. Might as well explore that. Unit cost with discount discount is what I'm trying to write. Okay, well that would be the original $50. We get a 5% discount, so we want to say times 0.95, right? Then what would be the charge if in fact, you know, we get this 5% discount? And I get $47.50. Oh, all right. So, if in fact we were getting this discount, we wouldn't be paying $50 each. We'd be paying $47.50 each. So, First off, I'm going to test if there's a new EOQ that I can use. So I just say 2 times 1500, that's our D, that hasn't changed, times 60, that hasn't changed, divided by H. Now remember, H is actually the unit cost, which is, this is the part that changed, $47.50 times that same old 25%. Okay, and I remember to take the square root and I check it out and it comes out pretty messy. It's about 123. It's not that much larger than the original one we got on the page before. Ah, now, but is, is it of any use? Uh, no, it's not. It's not valid. Had to check. What do we mean by it's not valid? Okay, the result of this formula tells you how much to order. The perfect amount. The amount that minimizes ordering and holding cost. Okay. It's recommending 123. Why is it not valid? Because it's based on each unit costing $47.50. When would each unit cost $47.50? It's like a reality check. Well, if you were ordering 500 or more. If you're ordering 123, you're not ordering 500 or more. This is just not valid. There's no answers here. Okay, now we did have an old EOQ associated with the old price of 120. Uh, we haven't thrown that out. That might, that might still be our answer, but there's one last thing to check. We might want to keep that old EOQ. It's definitely valid because if you order 120 at a time, you're going to be getting the $50 price and that's what it was based on, so it's fine. But you're going to want to check that against any price break quantity that qualifies you for a lower price. Well, there was only one price break mentioned, right? That was the 500 or more, you get a 5% discount. Oh, what's the price break quantity associated with that? Price break quantity is an amount, a Q, where you get the discount, but just barely. It is the smallest amount you can order and still get the discount. So in our case, it is the 500. It was that number right there. Now, what we want to do is basically compare this with the survivor from our earlier analysis. We might want to do one, we might want to do the other. Um, okay, well, how are we going to decide between them? It's all cost. Which one would cost less? Which one would cost less, but there are this extra layer of computations with price break that now we have the list of who we want to test. We have to cost them both out. And this time, and only this time, this can get a little tricky, we're going to want to include the purchasing costs as well. We don't generally do that because they don't generally vary with the order quantity, but now they do vary with the order quantity. Anyway, let's see, testing. 
total cost. First, let's look at the old one. Total cost Q equal 120. All right, well, that's just what? The 1500D divided by Q. Q is 120. That's why I said we're testing here. Okay, and that's times 60 plus the Q we're testing is 120 divided by 2, Q divided by 2 times H. H being 50, 25% of 50, 50 times 0.25, okay, plus, and only now, oh by the way, we are going to buy 1,500 of them, and if we buy them 120 at a time, we are going to pay $50 each. We know that. What is the total combined cost of all of this? It's a pretty steep bill. Um, 76500 is what I'm getting. You see, yeah, um, okay. Well, let's see how that compares to the opportunity to, this might be the answer, it might not, the opportunity to order them just 500 at a time. Okay, same steps. Q equal 500. Okay, so if we order them 500 at a time, 1500 divided by 500, we're only going to order like three times a year. Okay, but we'll pay $60 each time we do it. Plus, the average inventory will be higher. It'll be 500 divided by 2. That will be times. Now, what's the H in this scenario? It will, each unit, cost us $47.50. And the H is 25% of that. So we want to say that times that, right, times this. That's the holding cost. Plus 1,500 times 47 0.5. That's the purchasing cost. Um, oh, well, it's still a lot of money. 74,000. Get like 398.75 cents. So, um, all right. Now I see the answer. We're looking for which one has the lower cost. I do see, it's not substantial, but it's savings. I do see some savings with ordering right at the price break. That's why we had to check it. That's the answer. Uh, now how much should be ordered? Q equal 500. Now you might be looking at that and thinking, well, that's obvious. I mean, they offered you a discount. Aren't you going to order then the 500 at a time? No, not necessarily. You have to check it. Take your valid EOQ and compare it to each price break quantity. You know, maybe they had another scheme for a thousand or more, fifteen hundred or more. Each price break quantity that qualifies you for a lower price, you've got to check. Now, the last question. Once the purchasing manager of for SKU 005 places an order, the vendor requires five working days to deliver that order. That's not about amount. What should the purchasing manager's reorder point be? That is about not how much, but when. This is about setting a reorder point. Oh, okay. Well, um, how do you set a reorder point? We're going to wait five days for the order to get there. First, we thought the order was going to be 120, and then we decided it's going to be 500 because of this discount. But regardless of how much we're going to order, this is telling us that our lead time good vocabulary term, is five working days. A reorder point under these circumstances is just how much we're going to need, consume, use, or sell during those five days. So actually what I wrote here is just like, you know, symbolically what the formula is. It would be, you know, the five days, the lead time, times however much we're going to need each day. Another way to answer this particular question is just to ask the question, uh, what's five days worth of SKU 005? Because that's when you'd want to reorder, when you're down to your last five days left. Okay, well, I, I know that the LT is lead time. I know that that's five. I don't know what daily demand is. They didn't say anything about that. They didn't say anything about that, but they did tell us, well, we know that annual demand, annual demand is 1500, right? So it's really not a formula, it's just logic. Annual demand is 1500 and I knew we were going to use that information for something. Um, do you remember way back at the beginning of the problem, annual demand is 1500 but it says assume 250 working days. 250 working days in the year. 
All these models assume constant demand. So if you need 1,500 over the course of a year and there's 250 working days in the year, this is just logic. I get that that means it's six per day. You're basically using up, or the demand is six per working day. Oh, that goes right there. Oh, five days worth of SKU005 is 30. We use 30 over the course of five days. Oh, so we would want to reorder when there's 30 left in stock. So the reorder point for SKU005 is 30.